Hey everybody, Jasco Games is proud to announce that Street Fighter the Miniatures game is a millionaire! Woo! <laughs> oh man, pick that up. <laughs> it smells really good. It does, I love that smell. Mm. Greetings everyone and welcome to episode 6, season 4 of The Joffus. We have a lot of really awesome news going on. Um, if you've been keeping track, we have a Street Fighter Miniatures game on Kickstarter. That's pretty cool, you should check it out. Uh, the Las Vegas, or as we call it, the Vegas Golden Knights, swept the LA Kings 4 nothing in the series. That's pretty awesome. Um, there are these things. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with hash browns, but they make these hash browns that come in like a like an oval that are like fried together. Those things are delicious. I don't know if you've tried those. Definitely try that. That's awesome. Uh, anyway, without further ado, this week JT's talking about foil and stuff. Shane's going to talk about a UFS card that's really good that people should play, and uh, Sam's going to talk about stuff, and Luke's going to talk about stuff, Mohawk Mike. And here we go with this episode of The Joffus. In the arms of the angel. Hey everybody, Samantha here with Jasco Games. I am here to tell you how I, as a Jasco team member, am making UFS great again. That is by keeping Jason Horonsky on task. Bing, bing, bong, bong. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, 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 bong, bing, bing, bong. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. Bing, bing, bong, bing, bong. Fake news, folks. Bing, bing, bong. God bless you and good night. I love you. Hey, guys. Uh, as Jason mentioned, I've been working on some white plates this week that are going to be used for some events that might be coming up, and you might be able to see those if you show up to them. Anything's possible. Hey everybody, Luke Butler here, and we need volunteers for Gen Con and Anime Expo. So if you want to volunteer and come down and help teach people UFS and other great Jasco games, then either email me at Luke at Jasco Games or fill out a form on our website. The link will be right here. Hello everybody, welcome to UFS Corner. This week I want to talk about a foundation that has been heavily overlooked in the competitive environment. And that foundation is Ever Hopeful. Um, this is a card that I like to play as a one of in my decks. And uh, last week I built a Yamato Man deck off of Chaos. And I took it to the local game shop, We Play Games. Shout out to We Play Games. And I, I played a couple games with it and I actually won a match because of Ever Hopeful. So just to give you some history on this card. It was first printed in the Felicia starter deck and um, the original cost of the card, um, it was originally enhanced, add this card to your hand, add one of your opponent's foundations to their hand. So it was very abusable. You could keep on using it and then the other ability after you play it, you can discard a momentum and bring it back down to your staging area. So you could keep on bouncing their foundations and it was just a super powerful card. And um, we ended up, doing a most recent print errata. We gave out a promo version at 2017 Worlds, and then we also reprinted it in Platinum as a common. So um, now it has been errated to say, enhance, remove, add one of your opponent's foundations to their hand. And there's a lot of players who think that the card is just not that good anymore because they were used to the like how broken of a card it was, but Foundation removal is just so good. L l l let me just tell you this. So, my Yamato Man deck, I built off of Chaos. All right, this is my Chaos Yamato Man deck. And I play four copies of the Hunt for Spires and Dragons. And this is also like foundation removal. This turns the foundation off. And even though I play four copies of the Hunt for Spires and Dragons, and most people would agree the Hunt for Spires and Dragons is a superior card to Ever Hopeful. Ever Hopeful was the card that was winning me games. Um, because just the ability to deny your opponent a defensive piece, like if you have a hand of full of attacks and your opponent has foundations out and they're, they're gonna have some defense, you can just use Ever Hopeful to put the defense back in their hand and then you can just kill them because they no longer have that defensive piece. A lot of the defensive cards don't have blocks so you can just put a no block back in their hand. Or if you're playing high attacks, you just put a low block back in their hand. Like, this card is still good, and people aren't playing it. I'm gonna tell you something. So, on these symbols, 
On water, I can understand not playing it because you have other foundation spot removal. You have active treason, you have unmet demands if the opponent is at deadlock, red tail gunfire, and there's also red dragon assassin. So I can understand not playing ever hopeful off of water. Off of chaos, there's not really any foundation removal. Like, we have Hunt for Spires and Dragons, but as I told you earlier, I play a full playset of the Hunt for Spires and Dragons, and my one ever hopeful was still the extra juice I needed to win the game. There is another card off of Chaos called War for Armageddon, but that just flips foundations that have a response printed on them. Whereas ever hopeful, you can just bounce back any foundation you want. Now, the air symbol doesn't have anything to remove foundations from the opponent's staging area. Like, they have Hatred of Autumn, but that only seals specific foundations, but Ever Hopeful gets rid of the problem so you can win. Um, so, that's another thing too. Also, uh, I remember when this card was originally printed and people were trying to find ways around it. Uh, the, mainly the big thing was blocking with it. Like, after you play this card, you can discard a momentum and bring it down to your staging area. Uh, so, after you block with this card, like the timing is so fast, stuff like short fuse doesn't stop it. Yeah, you know, um, the only cards that can stop ever hopeful as a block are E Honda and Rochester CCG. But that asset's about to rotate in July of this year, so there's not really much of anything that can stop you from playing this as a block and bringing it down to your staging area. Uh, and that poses another thing too. Like, say you draw your hand, you have an Ever Hopeful, and you have a bunch of attacks. The opponent like doesn't really plan for Ever Hopeful, so you just play Ever Hopeful, discard a momentum, bring it down to your staging area, and then you attack them, and then you remove their best defensive piece, and then you just win the game because they no longer have that defensive piece. Like this card is so good. In fact, our 2017 World Champion Tim Keefe, he went to uh, a New York Pro Tour last year, and he played a Dalzim deck off of Air. And I looked at his deck list, and he was playing one copy of Ever Hopeful. So I sent him a message. I'm like, hey, dude, like, thank you for playing Ever Hopeful. This card is good, and like, not many people see how good it is because they were so used to how powerful it was before. And ever since it got nerfed, people think it's like bad. And Tim Keefe hit me up, and he responded. He's like, yeah, but you need foundation removal to win. So that's a little insight into the mind of a world champion. In conclusion... Resource removal is so powerful in any card game that uses resources, so it is not any different in UFS. Ever Hopeful is still a really good card, and I recommend that if you're playing on these symbols, try it out. Try it out as a one or two of. I'm currently playing one in my Yamato Man deck. I'm thinking about going to two because it's. I'm thinking about playing four Spiders and Dragons and two Ever Hopeful just because the amount of foundation removal I have can help me push through my attacks and win easier. Just a heads up, this weekend I will be in Lubbock, Texas for the PTC, so if you are there, I will see you there. And also there are some upcoming Pro Tour events. On May 19th and 20th, there is a Pro Tour at Saltire Games in Indianapolis, Indiana. If you are there, I will see you there. And then on June 16th and 17th, there is a PTC at Legendary Wolf Games in Omaha, Nebraska. And if you are there, I will see you there. Sweet Battle of the Magic Game! I have, a, I have a full head of hair. Yeah, you, you I don't. This. No, I don't need to look. I have a full head of hair. Actually, I do want you to do your part with that on your head. That'd be good. Me? You can, you can spin around in your chair and then be like, Me? <laughs> hey, everybody. No, I like it. Luke Butler here. Okay, fine. Luke yeah. Butler. Uh, you forgot the dustpan. Yeah, there's also a little bit over here. Here, let me kick it at you. <laughs> you missed the spot. There you go. Missed the spot. You missed the spot. You missed the spot. You missed the spot. Luke Butler, the Jaska Cinderella story. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> China's killing us. China. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs>